What keeps you awake at night? Sea levels are rising globally. Fears fueled by horror stories. Among the worst flu season in a decade, and it hasn't peaked yet. We all know the atomic bomb is very dangerous. Another series of deadly terror attacks. Because you know that thing your brain does in the middle of the night? This crazy thing where it takes a small problem and it just makes it enormous? Wow, that's so a mood. <laughs> Ooh, a just the the emotion in the sigh yeah. was not even like one of those. Ugh, it was like truly it defeated. Was sad, yeah, like yeah. woof. I am on week two of studying for the physics GRE, which I am taking this Saturday. So the Saturday Ooh. after this airs, and I. I'm tired. I would imagine so. Yeah, every every now and then I'll just get texts about <laughs> biophysics from Olivia, and I feel like that meme of the guy, like the farmer man who's poorly drawn, <laughs> and it says, are you winning, son? And that, that's what I feel like constantly when she's like, oh, look at this biophysics stuff. And I'm like, cool. I support you. What did you I said, <laughs> what you're did an you insane say? person, but I fully support you and your decisions. Yeah, because I... The problem I'm having with a lot of my programs, and that I've decided within myself, is uh, the biophysics curricula at UCLA is within the physics department, so I'm doing the core physics series, and then all of my elective series are essentially out of the physics department. Okay. Um, and I've just found personally within myself that I have zero interest in ever taking a biochemistry <laughs> class ever again. Um, not that I don't value it. Not that I think it's stupid. It's just, it's not for me. Not your so, thing. That's nope. fair. You know what? Uh, <laughs> None of what you're doing is for me either. So. And that's fair. <laughs> Fine. Um, so unfortunately, a lot of the biophysics programs I've looked at are all within the biochemistry department or are Oof. themselves their own department. So I look at the core curricula and there's literally zero physics. Uh, it's more integrated into the chemistry curricula. Yikes. So like essentially okay. like you'll have your biochemistry series and in that, it will have the math that they use for, like, certain processes, which is fine and a great fit for certain people. But I like math. So I would like to do a core physics series. And I'm having so many problems trying to contact people and explain them that. <laughs> uh, because there's, like, a huge issue, I guess, in the physics community, like, being open to interdisciplinary research. Um, I'd say, like... Hmm. All Pretty much all of my colleges that I'm applying for are highly interdisciplinary. That's something that I really value in my program that I pick. Um, but essentially, the offset of physics that focuses on biological processes is called soft matter physics. And this is greatly distilling down an entire section of physics research. Sure. Um, and within soft matter is usually biophysics. And so soft matter itself is pretty new. Um, I believe it's like big peak in popularity was, I'm going to say, late 70s, 80s, um, and hasn't really received a ton of attention, mm -hmm. and biophysics even less so. So like me finding programs that offer both my core physics series and then opportunities for interdisciplinary research is very... Very, very challenging. So I'm very tired. And I've emailed like a kajillion people within the past two weeks as well as study for a Kafka-esque exam <laughs> that is just representative of the American education system. So I can't overstate this. This sounds like the worst thing in the world. <laughs> I sent her a picture of Tupperware, which was literally filled one side to the other of flashcards, and that's the amount of formulas that I have to have memorized in my head by Saturday. I can't imagine. I can't fucking imagine. I'm a yeah. copywriter for an insurance company. <laughs> this is my job. <laughs> and see, to me, that sounds like a fate worse than death. Oh, so good. I think we're both, we see the other person's perspective. <laughs> Different strokes. Yeah. Um, um, woof. Well, I I saw uh, I saw Elton John last night, oh, which you was did. fucking magical. The man yeah. is a legend. He's he's a powerhouse with the stamina of, of a better stamina than people a quarter his age, which is Just insane. Me he played included. For three hours. 
Jesus. Three hours. He didn't even take a break. It was insane. He's so cool. God, what a guy. I want to get his... I wish uh, I was Elton John. Me too. Although, he had kind of a rough go of it, so... That's okay. Well, Haven't we all? Yeah, yeah. But we're not all rich, so... <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, it's funny. I think we, we dabbled a smidge on my turbulent high school years, and I've <laughs> unfortunately already gone through my partying phase. And so I was talking sure. to somebody the other day who's probably, I think she was like 20, and mm -hmm. she's like, her exact words were, I don't really like my roommates, but like, you know, I have to like talk to them because I want to get fucked up. You know what I mean? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> and I And I just thought to myself... Man, drinking with a group of people that I hate... That sounds awful. Sounds like a fate worse than that death. That sounds awful. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I, it's exhausting. I can't... Like, I can't imagine being in a room with people I hate, period. Like, But now choice. drunk? But now I'm drunk. What the <laughs> fuck? No. Also, I don't know what it is. I, I'm a 22-year-old adult, and right. maybe I'm just old. But, like, my least favorite part of drinking is, you know, like, the in-between part when you're not quite drunk yet, but you're definitely not sober, where you start getting a little dehydrated? Yeah, and you're, like, super thirsty. And so That is so wildly uncomfortable that yeah. I usually never progress upon, because I'm like, I just... I, I just really this. want some water. Yeah. Give, give some water. Some and they're like, ice water would be great. Thanks. I'm like, I hate this feeling. I I <laughs> would like to be hydrated. And I'm just, God, Why I'm do old. we live in the bodies of 65-year-olds? <laughs> <laughs> like, my fucking metabolism shut down when I turned, the day I turned 18. Like, what happened? I, I didn't have oh, a party phase. Like, so Olivia has sort of touched briefly on on the overview of her high school experience my high school experience was nothing i i didn't exist <laughs> in high school but i i did finally dabble in the uh one or two illegal drinks uh while i was in college <laughs> whoa <laughs> yeah i i'm a real rule breaker um but like I, I had one experience at a party where I, I got alcohol poisoning one time, and it wasn't even, like, life-threatening. It was just I, uncomfortable, was and you're really... like, this is enough. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, I have very few memories of that night, but what I do remember is ruining my, my uh, co-editor's toilet, because this was a newspaper oh, party. No. Uh, which he, he later tried to make me feel better because he was like, no, no worries. It, it always clogs up like that. And I'm <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then I remember calling Christian, which I don't remember anything I said, uh, and he was super worried about me, uh, asking oh, him to man. pick me up, and then standing up and falling into the bathtub. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, uh, oh, I threw up many man. times that night. It was not good. I laughed, oh. but it was actually terrifying. Yeah, uh, and I never and did it again. That yeah, was the see? Last, that was, that the was last it. Time. Like, that was your, like, man. That was awful. Good no. thing I'll never do that again. <laughs> yeah, was, and then I see God. like 18 year olds on campus, first of all, wearing booty shorts in 55 degree weather, which <laughs> hard pass. Yeah. Like, um, go you, but damn, no. God, Jesus. And like, I remember I was walking home. Not that this is relevant to our podcast in the slightest. <laughs> I was walking home. And I was so fucking tired. Yeah. I had been studying for like eight hours, and it was a group of white girls all in white shorts and black lacy shirts that could have well been negligee, which <laughs> I don't mind if it wasn't 55 degrees outside and my mother instincts kicked in. You're like, but what I remember are these children doing? What? In this weather? <laughs> <laughs> and then one of them pulled out a smart water. And in it, I guess, was just vodka. Oh. And she took a shot back and yelled, Samantha, do you want some vodka? And my thought in my head was, it's 1030. Where are they going? And there's a frat across the street. And my questions were quickly answered. But that sure. just sounds exhausting. Is that just me? God, I'm oh fucking old. God. That reminds me of, we used to do campus tours all the time at UCLA. Yeah. 
And I'm yeah. sure they still do. I don't know why I said that, like, it died or something. <laughs> yes, and then we the stopped after the incident. <laughs> right? Like, no. Anyway, so I remember I was sitting at a table, like, at Starbucks or something, and it was a group of high schoolers that had just come in, and we were constantly invaded in Starbucks by middle and high schoolers. Which All I think the- they just, they walk in and they'd be like... We have a Starbucks on campus, and they're like, "Pretty much, wow. yeah." And then like Incredible. they like order and try to like puff themselves up a little bit taller to seem like they belong there, and it's like, uh, just, just, don't. just order the black coffee and leave, Jessica. Please. <laughs> and this girl, she couldn't have been older than fourteen. She walked up. It was her and her two friends, and they were dressed in like like party attire, and it was maybe two p.m. <laughs> and she walks up to me and she goes, uh, excuse me, can you tell me where the frat houses are? And I was like, why? No. No, Did I Did you can't. really say no? Yeah. Well, the, the honest to God answer is I have no fucking idea, Amanda. Also, if she has any interest in going to UCI for... Greek right, life parties? Yeah, like, come on. I, no. No. I'm I've literally like... walked by the, the sorority and frat houses on a Friday night at 7 p.m., and most of the lights are off on UCI's <laughs> well, campus. Well, like, that's fine. Um, I mean, somebody did die last year. Yep, but, but we aren't going to talk a, about that on the podcast one-off. for legal reasons. Oh, shit. Uh, it was fine. No, Keep that going. was the thing. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, well, yeah, whatever. I'm sure people know. Anyhow. Yeah. Google uh, it. Yeah, it was just so, dis- just so disturbing, this 14-year-old who was like, I, uh, I I wouldn't have told her even if I did know. I, yeah, like, there was. So we don't much have that here. <laughs> in that, in that, uh, yeah, we don't have those. Sorry, wrong college. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just felt so protective of this child who wanted to go where a bunch of twenty-five-year-olds are like drinking and hanging out, and I was like, no, you're yeah. gonna get fucking attacked anyway. Anyway, speaking of protecting children, today's oh, episode boy. is the next in the series on fad diets, fad diets which fad apparently diets. has turned into eating disorders yeah. the series. I, um, yeah, it's I am so worried about this. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do just the trigger warning now? I assume there's well, not going to be any point here that's going to be like, you can get off the ride. I don't know. Um, because this this became so much more than I expected. So I, I wasn't sure what to do. I, I'm getting ahead of myself. But I'm so worried about how my notes are going to actually read out loud. Um, because when I was <laughs> oh, writing man. it, it felt like I was writing gibberish. Uh, oh, boy. Yeah. It, I... <laughs> I think that there's definitely an element of, like, trigger warning in general because everything that I'm about to describe is just textbook anorexia. But, like, yeah, I think think it comes with the territory of doing a fad diet series that, like, it's gonna be man we thought this would be the light one we always say that though don't we olivia this is stupid we're fools we are foolish and fools uh yeah oh by the way i'm brooke hi oh shit i'm when was the last time we fucking introduced ourselves (laughs) they should know no we might have new people okay fine new people that's brooke i'm not brooke moving forward welcome to things that keep me up at night and today i i I, i'm going to do my best to present some bullshit um okay so in in doing my initial research i i went through the uh (laughs) the twitter it wasn't really a poll but like the twitter the my favorite (laughs) website twitter.com uh it's https (laughs) um (laughs) <laughs> backslash backslash um yeah no i i i went through all the suggestions and i'm so sorry because i'm going to do none of them um Aww. and and i and i feel kind of bad but i think you'll understand when once i get into it and oh, please i be her life. please be her life. please oh be her man life. that would have been good i Fuck. i want to do pyramid schemes on its own though uh, well um, we were gonna do snake oil salesman at some point yes that'll be that uh yeah that's its own thing i think <laughs> Uh, but, <laughs> yeah. Did you like that? <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I turned into a goddamn cartoon character. <laughs> All right. So, I wanted to be topical because you were topical and you chose keto. And I was wondering what could possibly be more topical right now keto than again. keto. So, we're just going to do keto again. <laughs> 
<laughs> no. Um, I came to the conclusion that there is there is nothing as topical as the keto diet right now. <laughs> it's terrible for you. There's a ton of misinformation about it, and there are super concrete reasons why you should use it. And I swear it. to God, if you have the audacity to offer me a burger with avocado buns, Please. I will kill you where you stand. <laughs> it looks so bad and greasy! Gah. Anyway, so so I... I I hmm. I wanted to do something that was sort of separate from keto and a lot of the main like most popular fad diets especially those from like the 90s are kind of spin-offs of that so they involve yeah, pretty much reduction or elimination of carbs so I ruled out South Beach diet I ruled out the Atkins diet and all the ones that are kind of like that yeah so that left me with a couple None. different choices yeah I had nothing <laughs> so we're just going to sit in silence for 2 hours <laughs> fuck you I'm sorry. I keep fucking with your episode. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> Can I just say my thing? Yeah. <laughs> so, so I could go kind of down the road of popular diets and basically rehash what you talked about in your episode about disordered eating, why your body needs carbs, all that. And that would have been valid and it would have probably been a fine episode. Or I could dive into some of the more extreme diets, like some of the stuff that we were suggested, like the cabbage soup diet. Or the morning Which banana diet. Which sounds like a fate worse than death. Again, yeah. Oh my it's, god. These are, I, I can't stress this enough. That sounds like I would rather be dead. Um, <laughs> but but like all of those diets are kind of the the they're variations on the same idea. So you can have as much of whatever the diet is about, uh, but you can only have that. So like the cabbage soup diet, you can only have cabbage soup. The morning banana diet, which I just fucking can't. I. <laughs> You can have as many bananas as you want. That's the diet. <laughs> Which, like, sounds like when my father was <laughs> impoverished in college and literally could only afford bananas and then was constipated for, like, a week yeah, because yeah. he ate so many bananas. There's, like, no fiber in bananas! <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. Um, but, but those, yeah, like, it's pretty easy to draw the line where that goes wrong because your body isn't getting the necessary nutrients and, like... I don't know. It becomes kind of hard to survive when you're eating one thing. So I decided instead to focus on a diet that is, I, I feel like, actually classified as an anti-diet. Its insidiousness is not in its fad popularity because it's not like a terribly popular thing, but it is, it is I've noticed, growing in its popularity now, but also not really. I'll get into it. It's growing in its popularity now. But also, not really. Yeah. Yeah, you'll understand. I'm pimping it. Can can, can you live? <laughs> Literally took all of my energy when you said not focusing on diets that focus on one food. And I wanted to go, we're focusing on diets that have two. Two foods. So. Buckle up. No, it, 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 is, it is so insidious because it's associated with purity and spiritual enlightenment. It's used uh, with varying severity in Hinduism, Catholicism, and Taoism. Uh, and it is the only case I know of so far where every self-proclaimed practitioner of this diet is absolutely, unabashedly a liar. <laughs> Olivia, oh boy. have you ever heard of Inidia or Breatharianism? Uh, it sounds like a GRE vocab word, if I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. God, I hope it's not. Um, In a nutshell, Breatharians believe that you can indefinitely sustain yourself on nothing but sunlight and air. No, uh, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you, we're ending this podcast. Um, no, we're not. What, people believe they're phytoplankton? <laughs> Fuck you. I'm just... <laughs> Olivia, you have no idea! What the fuck? You have no idea what I've been through! <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, this is scratch literally scratching the surface. If we want to be more specific about it, Breatharians tend to subscribe to the idea that there is a life-giving force in the universe. Uh, usually this is pr referred to as uh, the Sanskrit word prana, which literally means life air or life force. So, I, by the way, I'm not knocking that necessarily. Like, there's a lot of sort of religious intertwining here uh, where, like, people believe that if you 
live on Earth, then there is like a life force, and there are a lot of different ideas that are similar to that. I'm not knocking religion as like a whole. I am knocking this very specific employment of that idea. I love so. that my first thought, as I've been, I have, will do, by the way, 500 physics problems total to study for this exam, and <laughs> I wish I was dead. Oh. Um, but literally, you were, like, full of, like, life, air, energy, and my brain went, well, that doesn't make any sense. Yes, the air is full of cosmic dust, rapidly expanding at an exponential <laughs> rate, but that doesn't have anything to do with life essence, so... Huh. Well, and yeah. that, that's actually a, a variation of it, is people claim that, like, the scientific backing for prana is that there is cosmic dust in the air, and so when you breathe it, then you should be sustained by it. So, to be a breatharian, okay. all you have to do okay. is renounce food altogether and start consuming nutrients from prana through breathing and soaking up the sun's rays. It's not that hard. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to let you sit with this for a minute. First impressions, go. It sounds like the leaders of this are going to be people that say they've been doing this for years, but are secretly <laughs> eating hamburgers when no one is looking. Uh, fuck you. Um, but yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, so I want to preface all of this with the knowledge that I completely bit off more than I could chew with this topic. Uh, okay. I thought it was horrifying uh, and interesting, and I dove into it, but the level of psychosis that I uncovered, I am obsessed with this underworld of insanity now. I, I, like, I can't stop thinking about it. The fact <laughs> that there are people who, like, believe this, and not even, like, just the, the people who believe it and, like, subscribe to it, like, your layman who, who subscribe to it, but, like, the people who claim that they've been doing it, like you said, for decades with no consequences, like... Oh, man, it's a lot. But if I'm going to yeah. do it, I'm, I want to do it right. So what I'll do is I'm going to talk about a brief history of breatharianism, some of the most famous practitioners of it, because there are a few, and then the so-called stages of breatharianism, and then the consequences of practicing it, and then I'll talk about the scientific basis for practicing it. Spoiler alert, there isn't None. any. Good. And then uh, I'm going to finish by talking about the way that it's used today, as in, like, today, today, not, like, just in the last couple decades. I have to stress, there is no way for me to fit everything I found into this episode. Everywhere okay. I looked, there was more insanity. There's crossovers into white supremacy that, like... Oh! I, isn't there always? Always. always is that an internet like law? This. Probably. It, it ought to be, because, like, anytime there's conspiracy theorists, it's it's always white supremacists that are somehow involved in this. And Just, and this... like, the lizard people, I just found out, the yeah. lizard government people, is because yeah. apparently white supremacists thought Jewish people weren't human. Yeah. That bummed me out. It's not that great. Really, that really bummed me out. You know, so... who I bet it also bums out? The Jewish people community yeah um yeah okay sorry <laughs> yeah you got me that was fair yeah. that was yeah it was open game right so yeah it, it's just it's so weird because like the the prana idea originates in eastern societies and so like it's bizarre that there's like this whole sect of breatharianism that's like hyper christian but like hey there's a brand White for people. everyone truly that's truly what we fucking do it's insane. I'm so sorry. I apologize on our behalf. <laughs> Same. So, first things first. There is a difference between breatharianism and fasting. So, okay. obviously, fasting, for anybody who doesn't know, uh, is just a period of time where you don't eat food or uh, food and liquid. Uh, those are called dry fasting and absolute fasting, respectively. Uh, you can fast by restricting certain foods, or you can fast for certain periods of the day, which is called inter intermittent fasting. Uh, but the key part of fasting is that, haha, it has an end point. You start eating again at some point. And there are tons of reasons why you would want to fast. If you have surgery, you'd fast the day beforehand to avoid aspirating food when you're under anesthetic. You would fast to avoid jacking with blood test results people have fasted as an act of protest that's generally referred to as a hunger strike cool and like tons of religious practice uh religions f practice fasting for various reasons within different sects some fast for health for energy for discipline etc etc but all of them 
stop fasting at some point. Mm -hmm. So the pinnacle of success in breatharianism is an absolute fast, no food, no water, forever. So Okay. Which sounds totally normal and this makes good. sense to me. Yeah. Yes. Those who claim to be complete breatharians claim that they only have like mouthfuls of food every couple of years or so because they want to taste. <laughs> Yeah, they're like, oh, you know, sometimes I just really want chocolate cake, and so I just have a mouthful of it and, like, hold it in my mouth for a while to taste it. One woman, and I'll get into her, woof, she refers to, to it as a food orgasm. I'm not joking. Okay. Yeah. So, to be clear, <laughs> they don't not believe that food and water are sustaining factors for life on Earth. If you asked them, they would be like, oh, yeah, if animals need food and water to, to survive. But rather, they believe that they and, you know, a select few who are called to do so can change their metaphysical vibrations such that they adapt to no longer needing food. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> so in my research, a lot of, like, the current self-professed breatharians claimed that, that people have been successfully practicing breatharianism for thousands of years in Egypt, China, in Greece, etc., etc. But the closest thing I could find to evidence of that was a story about a Swiss occultist in 1670. His name was uh, Paracelsus, or Para mm -hmm. Paracelsus. I don't know. And he was written to have lived off the sun and not eaten or drunk anything for 20 years. <laughs> Forgive me if I don't find a hundreds of years old French book of mythology to be entirely convincing, but... Why not? <clears throat> I'm not going to, uh, I'm Get not going to, yeah. you know, it's actually, I'm this, I remember there was a whole story that came out about how there's been numerous times in history where people claim that they can live without eating. Right. Uh, one of them that I remember was a woman who claimed that she hasn't eaten in years. And then there was people who were at her house, like closely studying her every movement. She couldn't like go to another room without them noticing. Right. And uh, they found out that her daughter, when kissing her, would <gasps> spit food and water into her mouth uh, which is wild uh, but away uh, ha, uh, gross yep. yep she was french kissing her daughter anyway <laughs> <laughs> I, that's the least of my concerns in yeah, that situation honestly, but okay right keep, so, in, keep going <laughs> <laughs> to the best of my knowledge, the modern understanding of breatharianism is a literalization of myth combined with real-life religious practices. So, like, Tao Buddhists don't do this, right? Like, this isn't yeah. this isn't something that your average practitioner of a religion is going to do. Catholics don't do this. Like, this is far left of center. So it's like it's like that article about the couple who didn't have sex after getting married because, and I quote, if abstinence before marriage is holy, then abstinence after marriage must be double holy. <sighs> Which is just fuck you. Just those, those are people that are like, nobody asked me to do it, but I've actually moved the goalpost on mm, my own. Yeah, like nobody needed to move it for me. I just did it for myself because haha, I hate myself. That guy, I, I love this story. He said that uh, after whenever he gets like the urge, he would either take a cold shower or eat an entire raw potato. Which is just me. What the fuck? <laughs> anyway, I digress. <laughs> So essentially what they're saying is, like, if fasting intermittently can be good for you, then teaching then yourself not to eat at not all... not eating forever must be... It's double good for Infinitely you. better. Right. And, like, there, there is an element to this where it's, it's not necessarily like, this is good for me. It's very much like an, I, this makes me better than average, right? Like, that's the whole point. So it makes you, like, a god in your own right. So... Breatharianism entered the 20th and 21st centuries. I am going to focus on the biggest names because those are the ones that are referenced when people try to defend Breatharianism. These are the people who, like, they're brought up as proof, even though, no, not at all. Um, but, but yeah, honestly, I could count on two hands the number of people who, like, try to actually say that they live their entire life without food and water. Uh, spoiler alert! They're all pathological liars who do this for profit. Excellent. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Yes. So I'm going to start with uh, Prahlad Jani, and I'm probably not 
pronouncing his name right. Uh, but I don't care, because fuck this guy. No, that's not true. Um, he was born in 1929. He was born in India, and he claims to have gone without food or water at all since 1940. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to let you do the math. How old was he when he claims he stopped eating and drinking? 20s? He was 11! Oh, you said 27? Oh, 29, yep. and then yeah, 1940. Yep, that makes sense. Whoops, I have an exam on math on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Woof! Uh, yeah, so when he was 11, he, he has talked about how he had a vision of the goddess Amba. Um, mm-hmm. And according to Johnny, he was instructed to stop consuming food and water, and then Amba created a hole in his palate, and she would directly sustain him with water through that hole in his palate. So he has lived as a hermit and a monk since the 1970s and is probably the closest thing to a real breatharian there is. He isn't okay. one. I just want to say, like, he isn't one, but okay. he's, like, probably the closest you're going to get. Uh, okay. So Johnny was tested twice by a neuroscientist, which, as an aside, that's kind of weird. <laughs> like, if you're going to test somebody's digestion i don't know i feel like maybe you should have a background in that or something but uh no he was tested by a neuroscientist named dr sudhir uh, shah once Uh by sterling hospitals and once by the defense institute of physiology and allied sciences the hope was to observe johnny and then use his techniques to help those who necessarily go without food for a long period of time so astronauts soldiers refugees you name it that kind of thing Right. So, right off the bat, I want to say that that's a weird reason to be testing somebody's claim that they don't need food or water. Um, To believe it and operate your study on the assumption that it's true. Yeah, I would say that's pretty weird. Yeah, that's super weird. So, doesn't matter. That's why they did it. Um, So, the general idea is they would put Johnny into a locked room. It was completely sealed off, overseen by shifts of guards and CCTV cameras, 24-7 for 10 days. And then he would be examined every day, and his health would be monitored for signs that he was deteriorating. People, you know, would make sure he didn't die, basically. Uh, Good move. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the study, Dr. Shaw claims that his team was baffled to find that Johnny didn't urinate, defecate, eat, or drink the entire time, and that he was in better health health than, I quote, most people half his age by the end of 10 days. Okay. Right. So the doctors claim to have observed Johnny's body producing urine, so they, by ultrasound, saw that his body was producing urine, and then would reabsorb it into his body uh, as Johnny's toilet was sealed to test his claim that he didn't need to urinate. Does that sound impossible to you? Um... Physiologically, yes. Cool, then you are also using your big girl brain. Because when you urinate, what is coming out in your urine is like an excess of salts and also toxic waste, where if you were to reabsorb that, you would die of sepsis. Yeah, that is exactly what happens when you can't pee anymore. Um, Yeah. So, since the studies were revealed, no shortage of experts have criticized the methods of Dr. Shaw's experiments. So... (laughs) Please tell me what they are. I I absolutely will. <laughs> what, do you think I was just going to move on? You know, I just, I, I would love to hear, it's like, so what we did is we put them in this room, closed our eyes for, for a <laughs> long time, and then we examined him after a while, and I was like, man, that's wild. Yeah, crazy. He said that it, he didn't pee the whole time. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> and it's not just on Johnny, like... They're, they have criticized Dr. Shaw's experiments beforehand as well. So okay. one especially important organization, uh, they're called the Indian Rationalist Asso- Association. They Excellent. have a knack for seeking out cases like these and then debunking them. Ooh. So they investigated at least two other claims of breatharianism and found that they had, in fact, gasp, been eating quite large <laughs> meals for the duration of the studies. <laughs> one of these investigators, his name is Sanal Itamaruku, uh, was expressly rejected from participating in both of Dr. Shaw's experiments. He asked and was was refused, which is kind of weird. Huh. In fact, according to Ada Maruku, Dr. Shaw routinely refuses to allow for independent verification of his, his experiments. 
Moreover, he never actually published his findings. Love uh, it. Yeah. In the case of Prahlad Jani, he never released any of the CCTV footage. He never published his findings. He simply asked NASA for funding and then never actually did anything with the research. The only record that Dr. Shah provided was to a blogger, which basically means that everything reported was hearsay. Did NASA give him the money? I assume so, because he did the experiment. <sighs> that makes me sad. Even NASA. worse. It gets worse. The experiment okay, okay. was a fucking mess, and as somebody in science, this is going to make your blood boil. Oh, boy. Dr. Shaw and his team sealed Johnny in a room for ten days. Okay. Sure. Unless, of course, he needed time for sunbathing and meditation, in which case he was allowed out uh, with a guard, but he was, in fact, allowed out of the room. He was allowed to gargle water and bathe generally unsupervised, which is kind of odd, considering that he was supposed to have no access to water. And, based on Ada Maruku's commentary, there were areas of Johnny's room that were completely out of sight from the, the CCTV cameras, and Johnny was frequently allowed to see religious devotees as visitors. Okay, fuck off. That's not... That's, <laughs> that's like... nothing! What? Okay, whatever. Yep. Yeah. yeah. No. It's nothing. Uh, no. That being said, it, it is likely, based on what they found, even though it's... The, the experiment was a farce, but it, yeah. it is likely that Prahlad Jani has adapted to a constant state of mild starvation and dehydration. Uh, it's not yeah. unheard of for our bodies in crisis to start taking nutrients from yeah. itself, so it's very well possible that Jani has at least tried to eat as little as possible over time. Yeah. My money is on that he's a fraud, but until we get uh, an actual impartial crew to verify the science, we will never know what his deal is. What we do know is that he's super old and that since th those experiments have taken place, he has been impossible to reach for further study from independent groups. Interesting how that works. Yep. yep. So then there's yep. also a man named Wiley Brooks, who is so much of a nutcase that you can't help but be kind of grotesquely charmed by his audacity. I... Okay. I, uh... I I <laughs> I want to show you his website, and I I might actually link this on Twitter and Instagram because it is something that everybody needs to see. Because I can only really go over the highlights. Every square inch of this site is solid goddamn gold. Wiley here was the founder of his own little patch of Breatharian heaven in the '80s, and he created what is known as the Breatharian Institute of America. Uh, the, the website, by the way, is on the same level of corny beauty as the Heaven's Gate site that I showed you. It's that same kind of thing. The general conceit is, is roughly the same, with a little bit of spice. Wiley Brooks believes that humans did not need food to begin with because they were operating on what he calls a fifth-dimensional level. We could take a kind of vacation from the fifth dimension into the third dimension, which is where we are now, and experience what it had to offer, but we didn't physically need food. We just wanted to eat it for the sensation, I guess. So he claims that all humans lived as immortal, ageless beings in Atlantis before what he calls the fall, after which we stopped inhabiting the highest frequency version of Earth, which he calls Earth Prime. Earth Prime is, is a purely fifth-dimensional area, and, and to live on Earth Prime means you have to return to having a fifth-dimensional body, and then you stop aging, you stop consuming food and water, you retu return to your youth, etc., etc., and then there's transitional Earth, which has... It's like a combination of third, fourth, and fifth-dimensional Earth, I guess, and then there's fallback Earth, which is where we are now. Fallback Earth. Yeah, that's... That's what it is. Uh, okay, so I looked up the website. Cannot be less less pleased that I did. It's excellent. Yeah, it's um, insane and wonderful. There is an interdimensional portal of parallel realities in Los Angeles. Oh, boy. Yeah, uh, um, I'm going to need you to stop looking at that right now. Okay, I won't look, but... <laughs> because there's so I'm much excited. more I have to talk about, and I don't want you to spoil it for yourself. Okay, I swear okay. to God, this man has an entire workshop called, quote, Empowered Ascension, or Immortality, that he offers exclusively to billionaires for a $100,000 uh, 
deposit first, and then the oh. rest of it costs a million dollars. Oh, but don't worry. He actually offers a payment plan, so it's fine. Oh, awesome. Maybe I could yeah. save up for that. Sure, sure, sure. He also sells an elixir of the gods, which is described verbatim with this. And I quote, This water originates and flows from the legendary fountain of youth and immortality in the Garden of Eden, in the land of milk and honey, which is in the fifth dimensional earth worlds, located at the end of the yellow brick road. I hope to God that it's L.A. tap water. <laughs> wanted to buy some for 500 goddamn dollars um it, and it and it by the way it doesn't just cost 500 dollars. It, it costs anywhere from 500 to ten thousand dollars uh based on the size of the bottle you get and he claims that a, a 32 ounce bottle of this heaven water will uh purify any like regular bottled or tap water uh, like, one drop of it, I think he said, can can purify the amount of, like, a swimming pool. I said it again. I hope to that God it's just LA. that it's L.A. tap water. I, I yeah. wish I had fuck you money because I would 100% spend a million dollars on that class <laughs> just to see it. What it is. Yeah, because obviously no one's done it. It gets better. <sighs> okay. In 1983, Wiley Brooks was caught leaving a 7-Eleven with a Slurpee, a hot dog, and Twinkies. Oh. And later, he was caught several times eating a double quarter pounder with cheese and a Diet Coke from McDonald's. According to his website, the only physical foods on the fallback earth that have fifth dimensional vibrations, wouldn't you know it, are McDonald's double quarter pounders with cheese and Diet Coke. Wait, is are you serious? I am dead goddamn serious. No, you're joking. It's, it's literally on, on his website? It's on his website. He claims that you can, can and should be a true breatharian if you only eat those two foods, but you absolutely cannot have fruits, vegetables, or water. It's in giant letters at the bottom of his, like, diet plan. Can that I you, you can send? Only I need to eat. see. Yeah. He can only eat double quarter pounders with cheese and Diet Coke once a day for however long. I don't remember. Drive through Guru. Wow, uh, you're not joking. No, nope. you're not fucking joking. No, nope. you are. Holy shit! And I love right next to it. It says sugar ages us. Holy shit! Oh my god, this is excellent. Keep going. Yep. He also claims that he was John the Baptist in a past life. Uh, he carries the vibrations of Jesus, and he blames the Illuminati for quashing his teachings. What a guy! <laughs> I love this. Yeah. So, so when he was caught with the double quarter pounder with cheese and the Diet Coke, he he made a statement originally saying that, like, you know, we live in a very materialistic and food-oriented world, and so that, that brings his body out of balance, and so in order to bring his body back into balance, he had to indulge in those foods every once in a while. But then his website all of a sudden claimed that, like, there is only one fifth-dimensional meal on planet Earth, and it is the McDonald's, specifically the McDonald's double quarter pounder with cheese and the McDonald's Diet Coke. Uh, and you also have to use a lot of ice. That's very what? important. That's not... But that's what... That's... Okay. Okay. All right. I know! It's water! Okay. It's the wa there's water in soda, too, but it's Yeah, whatever. That's, it's sugar water. It's water. <laughs> okay. It's just water. So okay. that's Wiley Brooks. He's amazing, and I highly encourage you to look at his website because it's just... I couldn't include everything because everything he writes is lunacy. It's... It's, Nothing is, is everything is better than the last. It's it's fantastic. And and this was where I had to stop because I was just like spending hours on this site, my eyes ever widening, <laughs> like trying to figure out what the hell was going on. So this <laughs> this brings me to uh Jazz Muheen, which is a really fun, like ethnic name for a white Australian lady named Ellen <coughs> Grieve. That's her name, but she goes by Jazz Muheen, but out of complete okay. contempt for her. And everything she stands for, I'll be referring to her as Ellen, because fuck you, Ellen, you killed people. Oh! So, Ellen is a whole different kind of unforgivable lunatic. Oh, she, no! She once was a businesswoman working in the finance industry, but she left... Fuck you, Ellen. Fuck you, Ellen. <laughs> 
people in the finance industry listen to this are like, hey, hey, wait a minute. No, no, you guys are okay. But Ellen, though? Ellen can get fucked. Yeah, she, uh, she left her day job to pursue hawking seminars about her experience with meditation. What began as a claim that she could sustain herself on air and prana alone eventually became a sort of savior complex? Uh, she claims on her website that she has telepathic powers, oh. uh, that she is one of what she calls the intergalactics, and that she can oh, channel the universe great. at the Temple of the Oracle. I have no idea where that is. Nowhere <laughs> on her website does she like give a geographical location. You know, Just the, the temple, temple of the... The one. It's a mindset, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And, and without going too deep in, she is... She's a nutcase, uh, but you can find out how far that particular rabbit hole goes if you visit her website, because, again, it's just full to the brim of... I, I There's, there's like, videos of... of she calls them angelic tones that she has channeled from the universe, and it's just her singing in weird, modulated, high-pitched tones. And there's, like, <laughs> videos of her doing fucking beat poetry about the universe, oh, and it's... I, oh, it's, I... This is my... This is my new obsession. Right? This is what I'm saying! It's, it's oh fucking insane! So, Ellen became famous in the 90s, and I say famous, like, kind of niche famous, you know what I mean? The 90s was a bad time for gurus. It was, like, a, a bad time, but, like, a really good time, I guess. And, like... For them, it was awesome. Yeah, yeah. For us, it was not <laughs> Not awesome. so great. So she published this book called Living on Light, which uh, outlines her methods for completely eliminating food and water from her lifestyle. And it, it's basically a this-is-how-I-did-it kind of a book. Okay. I refuse to buy the book. Um, okay. But essentially, it outlines this 21-day program in which she claims you can just completely wean yourself off of food and water. Uh, okay. Basically, like, the first week, I think, you just don't eat or drink anything, and then you slowly work your way backwards. It's super weird, but it's also, mm. haha, very dangerous. So, she claims that she hasn't eaten anything out of necessity or hunger in 40 years. but And she's the one who says that she'll occasionally have a mouthful of cheesecake or chocolate for the taste. She's also the one who coined the the, the taste orgasm phrase, which is beautiful. Ellen, you're a freak. Um, this is all bullshit, and I will get into why in a second. But nobody really cared or noticed her bullshit until five people died from following her program. Oh! One of them was a 31-year-old kindergarten teacher named oh, Timo Deegan. No. He was He was sent to the hospital after following Ellen's outline for 12 days in 1997, <sighs> and he slipped into a coma. When he was admitted, the doctors say that he had suffered a near-total collapse of his circulatory system, and one doctor described him, and I quote, as looking like he had come from a concentration camp. Oh, no. He was in the oh, hospital man. for four pretty touch-and-go weeks on an IV, and then he recovered enough to return home, only to fall over and die from a head injury due to his vision loss and weakness. Another one was Verity Lynn. Uh, this one was pretty famous. She was 49 years old, and she spent eight days in a tent in the woods attempting Ellen's outline before dying of starvation and hypothermia. They found her, a fisherman, uh, I believe, found her in the woods. She was, like, outside and completely naked, and she had been dead for, like, five days. It was no. not great. But the most disturbing one to me uh, was Lonnie Marsha Rosalind Morris. Uh, she was 53 years old, and she attempted Ellen's outline for one week under the supervision of two other breatharians. After one week, Morris was paralyzed on one side struggled to breathe and speak, and was consistently vomiting a black tar-like liquid. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. Yeah. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. So, uh, <laughs> what, what do you think the couple that was watching her did, Olivia? Oh, well, they, uh, they must have helped and aided her in her noble journey. Right. Which, uh, which obviously means that you know, she doesn't need medical care. They claimed that they believed she was undergoing a spiritual blockage. But after she was found and admitted to the hospital, it, it had been found that Morris had suffered a stroke. 
had acute renal failure, was in a coma, and both feet were gangrenous. When asked to comment on this woman's death, Ellen's only response was that perhaps Morris was, quote, not coming from a place of integrity and did not have the right motivation. So, I don't threaten violence <laughs> often. Um, Is that true? <laughs> but I don't want to say anything legally bl- binding. Of um, course, of course. We're just talking, like, just I'm friends. Just, We're just friends talking, right? I just... Just chatting. Would I would react to Ellen's presence? Is, would you? Yeah, I would react. That makes sense. Yes. So, after the deaths, uh, sixty minutes in Australia requested that Ellen Grieve be placed under surveillance for ten days to test her claim that she could sustain herself on fresh air and sunlight. She completely and readily agreed. But, two days into the experiment, she was found to be suffering from, wouldn't you know it, severe dehydration, high blood pressure, listlessness, etc., by the examining doctor. She claimed that 60 Minutes had stacked the odds against her by placing her in a hotel room near the city, which uh, was causing air pollution so she couldn't absorb the nutrients well enough. So she immediately requested that they move her somewhere with fresh air. They couldn't be more willing. Yeah, honestly, amazingly, the network was completely cool with that, and they moved her to a mountainside retreat. You can actually watch the video of this whole thing. It's fucking incredible, this whole thing. Within two more days, Ellen's pupils had completely dilated, her speech had slowed, and she had lost about 14 pounds in four days. The doctor advised that 60 Minutes stop the program, as Ellen was a high risk for kidney failure, which 60 Minutes would be culpable for. Even at the end, when she was, like, actively dying, Ellen refused to acknowledge that she had lost. She claims to this day that the pollution made it impossible for her to absorb her nutrients and that the footage had been manipulated. She also said that 60 Minutes really stopped the program because they were afraid she would actually win, And on and on and on. It keeps changing. The bottom line is she nearly fucking died, and you can see it yourself. She looks awful, and she, like, can barely speak. It's... I would react to her (laughs) being near me. I also want to point out that when they went to her house to, like, move her, they found that her refrigerator was completely crammed with food, which she claims was entirely for her husband. Right. 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 (laughs) Right. So, why right, do it? Right. Why? Why try to keep up the appearances? Why claim that you can do something that is physically impossible for the human body? Something that's impossible to prove. Like, in cases like Ellen Grieve and Wiley Brooks and so many others, there's, there is a financial gain, obviously. Ellen gets paid for seminars, for books, media appearances, on and on and on. And she can keep lying to people because it's how she makes her living. There are people like Ray, I I think you pronounce it Mayor, Ray Mayor. He's an Israeli breatharian coach uh, who claims to have survived eight days without food and water while on camera. Uh, I have seen the video. He lost like 12 pounds. So (laughs) uh, he uses YouTube to sort of propagate the claim that he no longer needs food to survive. He offers workshops that cost thousands of dollars per person. Uh, And his videos kind of put their own spin on Ellen Greaves' system, uh, claiming that there are actually four levels of breatharianism, where level four is the highest, where you actually don't consume anything. And he claims, I love this, he claims to be on level three because, and I swear to God this is what he said, it makes him more approachable as a mentor, and also he wants to be found sexually attractive and doesn't want his libido to go away. The man has priorities, I'll, I'll give him that men are really something else. <laughs> Even these ones. And I bring yeah. up Ray, actually, specifically because of his book, however, uh, which, is, which is chock full of pseudoscience bullshit, and you can read it for free. It's on a PDF on his website. Uh, I am especially fond of his description of his 21-day initiation process, uh, during which he says he felt, quote, high all the time after a week without food and water, which, hey, wouldn't you know it, is a pretty well-known side effect of anorexia. 
He also has well. a section for the scientific backing for Breatharianism. Do you want to guess what it says? Okay, hold on. Okay. If I were crazy, <laughs> I would probably say cosmic dust. Hmm. So that's your scientific backing. Um, congratulations. You just, out of your ass, pulled more than he did. He <laughs> says there is no scientific proof that it works, but that oh. you should just believe that it does because he says it worked for him. He says that there are things that science can't explain, and I quote, science is changing its mind about things all the time. I... Hey, Ray, no, it's not. I... I... Did I ever tell the story about my philosophy class? Uh, it depends. I, I, I don't know. Um, it was about a guy who went to a Buddhist temple and recited a lecture from the, the Buddhist speaker there. And I don't know whether it was, like, correct or he had misheard it or, you know, whatever it could be. But what he delivered to the class was the phrase, you know, science is able to change with new information all the time. You know, for example, Newton discovered gravity, right? And then Einstein later disproved gravity. What? And I and I remember my friend who was in that class was studying to be an aerospace engineer, and he looked up and shook his head. <laughs> like, that's just like a, a shock response. Like, um, I reacted just now like, like a dog getting squirted in the face with water. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> but so like I guess like that's that same argument of like so you see science thought gravity was real but it isn't and you're like yeah, no you dunce it's is. still fucking real what what are you talking about oh my god I, yeah so. so he's he's just saying that like science changes its mind about things all the time which is not true uh, so there's no reason why we couldn't create our own nutrients internally because like it could it could happen that's his argument. But the worst part is at the very beginning of his book, and it, it comes in the form of a disclaimer. And I'm going to read it hey. verbatim. It says, I and or anyone associated with this book directly and or indirectly are not responsible for the effects and or results, either positive and or negative, from participating in its content. You try, use, and or experiment with the information in this document at your own risk. Even though the methods in this document have been tested without any negative results, this disclaimer protects me and or anyone associated with me directly and or indirectly from any liability. This, That's wild. This right here is the thing that absolutely blows my mind. Anyone with half a brain in their head knows why this section is in here. If it were safe, it wouldn't need to be here. Ray Maurer yeah. knows what this shit will do to you if you were to truly practice it as written. Ellen Grieve knows what would happen to you. Wiley Brooks knows. I am sure Prahlad Johnny knows to some extent what would happen if you if you participated in Breatharianism as it is meant to be. Which, like, also, we're going to, like, super clarify. They know because they're clearly eating. Yes. Like, right? I, I cannot stress this enough. There is no fucking possible way that these people are surviving on nothing but air and sunlight it isn't possible and i'll get into why in a second but like not that we really need yeah, to get like, into why but, but like but, but your point completely stands if they fully believed this like you know ellen grieve when being watched literally almost died on air yeah, right yeah like but come on you know that was solely to, like, refuse to be wrong, but if she truly believed this 100%, she would be dead well, because like, she would not eat. Yeah, well, and the thing is, is that even these people, Wiley Brooks reassessed his understanding of Breatharianism and, like, redefined it so that he could eat junk food. Like, yeah. he did that. Ellen Grieve has admitted that she survives on about 300 calories a day, which is a lie, but, like... That she has sort of since conceded that she eats about that much because it's what she wants to do, but she doesn't need it. Just trust her on that. Oh, right? my like, this God. Is, this is the stuff that they do. Is they, they claim, just believe me, I don't need food and water anymore. I just kind of do it sometimes for funsies. Like... <laughs> I just put a, a bit of cake in my mouth and just just hold it there. And I just fucking come everywhere. <laughs> like... Fuck you, Ellen. God damn. I hate her. Anyway, in case you're listening to my my impassioned ranting and thinking, wow, this is something that I want to inflict on my body, let me tell you 
exactly why Ray Maurer put this disclaimer in his book. Okay. Your body needs glucose. Full stop. All right, let's let's pack it in, We're boys. It there we go. <laughs> God. You need to eat food to get glucose. That's it. Yeah. You, you need glucose. You need to eat to get it. Glucose provides the energy in your body to create energy, and energy is what keeps your organs functioning. You know, like your brain and your lungs and your heart and the stuff that keeps you alive and stuff. Even fucking plants can't create their own glucose from nothing. They can't just create it in their systems they have they have root systems to gather nutrients they get their they get their <laughs> they get their nutrients from the sun but that's neither here nor there <laughs> so, i was about to say well, this is kind of a difficult example you're like, shut the fuck up yeah, shut up no it, and like my point is is that you can't self create your energy like you can't yeah you need it from somewhere else right. something also we need water so you know, you got to stay alive and stuff. When your body doesn't have any glucose in it, it turns to glycogen and then breaks down your stored carbs. Once the glycogen is gone, it burns your, your fat, uh, which is where the liver starts processing fatty acids into ketones. And then our old friend ketosis starts. And then there, when there are too many ketones to... Pro- uh, no, yeah. When there are too many ketones to process, eventually your body will realize that it can't live, live off just fatty acids and ketones alone. So then it begins to cannibalize your muscles and your proteins. Your muscles will atrophy and then become unusable. In three weeks, your body will shut down as you won't have enough meaty stuff in your body left to power your organ function. Meaty stuff. Yeah, meaty stuff. You know, like also the, meat the, stuff. the the most critical one, which is why eating disorders are so dangerous, is your heart is a muscle. Sure is. It will start atrophying your heart. Yeah, and and like a lot of people who starve to death die of like cardiac arrest. Like yeah, because your your heart one can't can't handle the ability to like pump through that as well as in starvation i believe your blood pressure increases to compensate for like a whole bunch of different biological factors and signal i don't want to get into it but like so like high blood pressure combined with an atrophying heart (laughs) yeah it's not a great combination you're gonna die you're gonna die and that is if vitamin deficiency doesn't make you really ill first um of course if you if you don't get enough salt you're gonna get a goiter (laughs) right (laughs) <laughs> it's not it's not good. And yeah. all of this is assuming that you're drinking water. If you don't drink water during all of this, your timeline gets shortened quite a bit. Isn't it three days? Uh, no. Not quite. It, three days is, like, severe dehydration. By the third day, uh, you your blood would become so coagulated that it would actually have trouble getting through your veins and arteries efficiently, so your Stop. skin would shrivel from lack of blood flow, and you'd constantly be dizzy from the low blood pressure. You'd faint a lot. Uh, by the fifth or sixth day, your body would actually slow your blood flow to non-vital organs, which unfortunately includes your kidneys. Now, without efficiently working kidneys... Your blood You can't clear stuff out of your blood. Yeah, your blood is just slowly becoming toxic waste uh from from your cells, you know. Oof. And at the end of a week, your body will have lost 10% of your weight in water. Eee. Your vital organs will have no way to cool down, they will overheat and they will shut down. More likely than not, kidney and liver failure will be your cause of death as your blood just becomes straight up toxic. Yo, um this gross. Yeah, it's super fucking gross. And I'm doing that on purpose because it's super important that everybody understands what the implications of this is. This is what Breatharianism looks like. To practice it yeah. as written means to die slowly, painfully, and inevitably. You cannot do it. Yeah. To tout this process as spiritually cleansing or enlightening in any way is reckless at best and murderous at worst. Yeah. Wow. Frankly. Yikes. I don't give a shit if somebody claims that it's part of their religion. It is responsible for the deaths of countless, literally countless, because we don't know how many people have died from this. Like, yeah, it's there's not no being way to track up. that, you know? Yeah. So, even worse, I can't, I can't express how selfish and self-righteous it is to claim that you alone have achieved the perfect vibrations necessary to avoid death when innocents everywhere are starving and dehydrating every day. 
how sadistic and sociopathic must you be to offer your, quote, skills for the low, low price of $30 a month and then blame other people's lack of success, here meaning death, literally, on their intentions or motivations? That's straight up sociopathic. Do you, do you recall, uh, it, it was an Australian beauty guru who claimed to have cured her own brain cancer from eating, a, like, a vegan diet? I'm sorry, what? Yeah, she claimed that she had brain cancer, it was terminal, and she reversed it by, like, eating healthy and eating clean, and she had a whole cookbook series, but as a result of having this, like, book out there, people opted out of cancer treatment oh and God. therefore died. Uh, and I believe because the Australian government actually cares, um, she was wildly sued into oblivion and admitted she made the whole thing up and she never had cancer. Um, I am so, so angry. Yeah, it's just, but it's uh, the same shit yeah. of like that you know, you know, because yeah. if you actually had cancer, you probably would have gotten it treated. Right. And then. People like Steve Jobs died because he sincerely believed that he would be able to do like naturopathic stuff and cure cancer, and he died. And by the time that he was like, "Fuck, I need real big boy medicine," like it was terminal. It was it was far too late. Right. Um, There's a reason and why chemo exists, why radiation therapy exists. Like it's not fun and it's not pleasant, but it's the best we've got right now. <laughs> and to re-extend it back, there's a reason food and water exists. Yeah, that's a that's a whole thing that we've been doing for a long time because we need it and stuff. So like this which is why it's so fucking disturbing to me to see currently Instagram models using breatharianism as a, I, like no. a weird buzzword for their online presence. Uh, what? Yeah. So there. How did a... you find out about this? Was it Instagram? Kinda. Uh, I I was doing a bunch of breatharianism research, and I just so happened across this news story about a woman who actually got sued uh, because of what she does. And well, actually, I don't think she got sued. I think she was like slammed by a bunch of doctors. Um, mm. But her whole thing. There's a woman named Audra Bear on Instagram. Okay. Uh, she kind of got a lot of attention because she claims to be a breatharian. Uh, a bunch of doctors, like, slammed her use of this word um, and claiming that it works. So she uses a lot of the same garbage as the others, claiming that she gets most of her energy and from breath work and the sun. Uh, she <sighs> claims that she does breath work every day anywhere from 30 minutes to three hours. Yeah, uh, but there's one key difference between her and everybody else. Her breatharianism okay. includes eating smoothies. So she's just on a giant smoothie cleanse. So she's just drinking smoothies. She doesn't eat solid food, but she makes fruit and vegetable smoothies and drinks tea. So she's not fucking practicing breatharianism. She's just on a liquid diet. Like, I'm not, I, I, I want to be clear, I'm not complaining that she's getting any calories, but the bottom line is she's claiming to be something that she isn't. What, what we're witnessing is a woman who heard the word breatharian, saw that it was a pseudo-spiritually legitimized movement, and then used it to describe what is just a liquid diet. This girl, and so many others like her, if you look up breatharianism on Instagram, all of it is like this, where, it, like, people are, are using it to advertise their juices, I guess. This girl and all the others are trading the word anorexia for breatharian, and that's all there is to it. This diet is insidious in a way that I never expected. Yeah, there are people who claim to be gurus, and, and, and they're quacks and liars, and absolutely don't practice what they preach. But by claiming that it's possible to cleanse the body by eating less or eating nothing at all... These people have opened the door to for genu genuinely anorexic people to claim that they're not anorexic, that they're just spiritually enlightened, that they can hide behind clean living and yoga and meditation instead of confronting the fact that they are deeply, deeply ill. Yeah. It's just like yeah. a new way for anorexic Instagram models to say, I'm not sick. I just have an alternative lifestyle. I'm part of a new age movement. And that is what keeps me up about this. There's that the, there's a group of liars that can make outrageous claims completely unsupported by science and call it a spiritual movement, gain money and attention and whatever they want from it. 
and then be com completely absolved of the damage that their words do to the world. I hate that there is a couple that, that can be featured in a newspaper completely unironically for allegedly not eating for nine years, that they can claim that the wife carried two healthy babies to term mm -hmm. while only eating nibbles of fruit or sips of broth one to three times a week. That's impossible. It cannot be done. If you didn't eat anything while you were pregnant, your baby would die. Sorry, that's the truth. And yeah, you gotta fucking blow up on them calories when you're pregnant. Right? So I find it very difficult to believe that you're delicately eating soup during right? one of the most calorically intensive events of a woman's life. Right? It's, it's impossible. Okay. Full stop. If she had done it, the babies would have died. And yet The Sun and The New York Post, who admittedly are not like the pinnacle of journalistic integrity, but that they can write these people's words as if these things actually happened. And they didn't. But people everywhere can just read this story and jump to the conclusion, well, hey, if these guys can never eat, then maybe I can too. These people, th this couple claims that they, they don't eat ever and that they use the money that they would have spent on food to go traveling. Can you imagine being legitimately poor and seeing like this, this newspaper art article saying, if you just follow these simple steps, you won't have to ever eat again and being desperate enough to try it. Their blood is on these people, these people's hands. The yeah, newspaper 100%. too. Like, th then they get sick, and they're too sick, they're, or rather, they're too poor to treat the sickness, and then they die, and no one ever hears about it. People yeah. like Ray Mayor can go on television and lose twelve pounds and faint on camera, but call it a success because he didn't die. People like Ellen Grieve can point to Prahlad Jani and say that he, quote, baffled doctors with his miraculous self-sustaining body, saying that he's proof that it works. And then completely ignore the huge red flags in those studies and completely ignore the fact that we've never seen the data. And all of these people are turning a profit. It's insane. It's oh dangerous. And I I know that if, if somebody out there is, like, so deep in that they're using breatharianism to justify their, their anorexia, that, that my words aren't going to be the thing that makes them stop. But, yeah. like, I, it, it terrifies me that there are these kinds of legitimizations of eating disorders, hiding them behind spiritualism and religion in, in just, it's completely unethical. I, <laughs> I didn't expect for it to go yeah. here when I started, but it, it's so just completely insidious the way that it works and it, it starts looking like you know conspiracy theories and you know quack science and snake oil salesmen and it is very much that but it's killing people actively and it's just it yeah. terrifies me that stuff oh like this God. can happen and that there's absolutely no recourse uh because somebody put a disclaimer in a book oh man i wish I could encounter some of these people in real life. Um, and this was like, this is, you know, a bit what I touched on with my own experiences and, and like veganism and shit like that. It, it is completely fine and legitimate to be like, you know, I feel bad for animals because, hey, I'm soft as fuck. Yep. I get it. Yep. Um, or just like, you know, me consuming less meat and less animal products is a, like a less of a carbon footprint, whatever. Those right. are fine, legitimate, valid reasons. And as long as you're getting enough vitamins and eating eating well and eating enough calories, it's fine. It's that my justification for being vegan is, you know, the really neutral way that I would always put it is, uh, oh, you know, it's just it's way better for the environment. It's way better for your health um, with like the underlying knowledge in my head or mis, mis knowledge, I guess, whatever, um, <laughs> is that meat or animal products would cause cancer was like my brain's rationale because of what I saw in a documentary, right? With the China diet. Right. Yeah. Um, and like, this is kind of that same thing where, you know, if you ask me, I would dogmatically explain like why my diet is healthy. And I was like, quite frankly, probably eating like 1100 calories a day on average and enough. exercising all the time, yeah. you know, but I was so deep in that rabbit hole. But even then I was like still eating food, definitely, absolutely not enough. But like this escalates that to the point of like, I eat delicately 300 calories a day, which you don't. And I can't re like reemphasize enough your point of if it worked 
they would be doing it, but right. they're not because it doing. doesn't work, right. right? Because they're eating. If it worked, they truly would not be eating, but they are. Um, and like that's what like <laughs> that's what blows my mind is like I'm trying to like for them I I believe they're compulsive liars and are so dead set in their way of having this like aura around them. They're gonna do whatever they fucking need to or can to ensure that they still have a following and sure a, and, and a claim. And, and there is a possibility that some of these people genuinely believe that that the things that they're saying are true when they say them. Like yeah. I, I don't think that Ellen Grieve would have agreed to be on 60 Minutes if she didn't think she was going to succeed. I think she yeah, thought and she that's, would. Pathological liars are always, like, so bizarre to me in that right. sense. Because, like, if you were, like, n- you know, knowledgeably a liar, you know, you wouldn't go on the 60 Minutes. Like, that's why that, right. you know, spiritual dude from India, like, didn't go for any follow-up studies. Because right. he was yeah. like, ah! yeah this isn't real and he just like you know shied away from it versus she was like no this will work and i don't really know where that comes from from a compulsive lying standpoint you see so many instances of like a kajillion snake oil salesman that have existed throughout the millennia so insistent that their lie is real but you know there are very impressionable people out there who you know the keto thing you're gonna feel insufferably ill for several weeks but then it'll be fine and then you know if there's something legitimately wrong they're like oh it's just that that keto flu thing you know what i mean right it's but yeah. it's not normal it's, to feel that way <laughs> no and and it makes me so sad because uh, there's just there's so many quite frankly impressionable people out there and like i don't think they're stupid and i don't think they're intentionally doing harm to themselves i think you know you see something on the internet you see someone saying no this worked and then you try to emulate it and you know you have the gut feeling of this is going wrong i feel horrible and them telling you no don't trust that feeling it it'll be okay you just have to transition into right. that you right need to you need to higher heighten your uh, vibrations and don't listen to your body's lies that's something that's in fucking ellen greaves book that like your body will lie to you and tell you that you're not doing the right thing but like to keep doing it it's fucking insane that is so dangerous, but okay. Yep. Um, yeah, I think I'm kind of on the same bar of view of what keeps me up at night. The fact that, like, if they're truly compulsive liars, they will feel nothing about the harm they're causing. And when people die, it's not their fault. And they just want to maintain that aura and the, the cult following and nothing they do is wrong. And they're definitely not lying. Yeah. I highly like, encourage everybody to watch some of the stuff that, that I've, I've set out some of the funny stuff. Sure. But like the, <laughs> look at Ellen Greaves site, look at the 60 minutes thing, especially is very enlightening. As far as yeah. the attitude, because it's so hard to describe this complete unwillingness to admit that she she was backed into a corner and that she was going to die. Even at the end, as the doctor was telling her, like, this this cannot work, you, your kidneys will shut down and you will die. There was just no comprehension in her that that was the truth. It's It's insane to watch. And she doesn't look emaciated. If you look her up, she looks fine. So she's eating. Right. Like, she's thin, but she's not, like, dying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. It's just crazy. Uh, And that's my show, folks. I hope you liked my yelling. (laughs) That was really incredible, Brooke. Well done. Woof. It's so much. It's... Oh, oh man. God. Like I I entered a fugue state for 5 hours going through like these sites of these various people and like looking through their materials and it's just it's so easy to get lost in the rabbit hole. Um and and I think the thing I want to end on is there's a video uh that I will absolutely be linking to our Twitter. Um and this was sort of what I meant when I said that there's a weird crossover into like white supremacy. There's a YouTube channel called Breath underscore Aryan. I didn't find anything in his content that would suggest that he's like a white supremacist, but that's enough for me. I think having Aryan in your in your username is a pretty good indicator. Um this guy, I I am pretty convinced that he's a troll at this point, but there is always the possibility that he's not. Um mm-hmm. and his videos are gold. 
they are hysterical. Whether fake or not, they're incredible. Yes. And and I actually, I knew I wouldn't get a response, but I actually tweeted one of his videos at Cody Ho because I want them to do a That's Cringe on it. It is insane. This guy made an entire video about why he stopped jacking off uh, because your life essence is in your semen, I guess. And if you jack off, then you lose your life essence. It's amazing it is the best thing ever there's the the one about being a breatharian is he like goes to a stream to have his first sip of water in a month and he like drinks from a a mountain creek and it's it's the most insane thing i've ever seen it's so good (laughs) real or not it's incredible it's fantastic and I, i will definitely link that on twitter it's it's uh, the light ending to this episode that I desperately needed. Um, yeah, man. Ugh. I don't know what series we could do next, but if we want to do the uh, snake oil salesman next, I have thoughts. I am down. I, I think and we're I, in the right place for that. And I would love to encounter some of these people hmm, Yeah, I, uh, in life. I know a couple people who, who sell Herbal Life, and it, it has, like, completely ruined their friendships. It's... Really? Yeah. You know them? Yeah. Who? Oh, I can't, you can't fucking I mean, say no. I yeah. <laughs> Come on. You're like, oh, yeah, Jeffrey from high school? Yeah, what a yeah, fucking what a weirdo. Loser. <laughs> yeah, no, th- this, there's this, wow. this girl that I went to high school with, um, and, like, I reconnected with her one time. Um, yeah. And then she actually reached out to me two other times trying to get me to take the health assessment. And I was like, bro... Stop. Like stop reaching out to me. Like we we hadn't talked in forever. And then she's yeah. like, Do you wanna buy herbal life? And I'm like, No, I don't. Please <laughs> Did leave she me phrase alone. it like that? No, no, of course not. Because like, <laughs> it, it's way more like sinister than that. It always yeah. starts with like, I'm gonna do a free health thing, and then they tell you, Oh my god, if you don't buy herbal life, you're gonna die and stuff. And like that's their shtick. Yeah. It's crazy town. Yeah, I, I've had a couple people that I know of that do, like, very similar, mm-hmm. like, thingies where they make you take some kind of quiz or questionnaire, and then they're like, are you aware that you've never even seen a B vitamin? And you're like, I, 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 I didn't. Honestly, I did not. I didn't know that. Yeah, sorry. Um, Whoa. Yeah, I actually have quite personal experiences with the holistic doctors. I tore 17 ligaments in my ankle when I was 13. I remember that. And... And my parents took me to a chiropractor instead of a doctor. Um, they feel bad about it now. Like they, I, I did that to myself you know. once, so like no big. <laughs> yeah, they were like they were like, damn. What and, you know? Funny enough, this is a hilarious story. I donate my blood pretty regularly because I'm poor, and they give you free food. <laughs> um, and they tested my blood, and I checked online because I couldn't remember if I was O positive or O negative, but I was like certain that both of my parents are O. Um, and I look at it, and I'm A positive. And I'm uh, like, um... Don't know how that's possible. Ron? Like looking at your mother like, mm. Hey. <laughs> and I, I said, hey, which one, of you, which one of you is blood type A? And my mom's like, I'm definitely O. Like, I donated blood for years. I know I'm O. And I'm like, Dad, you're probably A. And he's like, no, I'm O. And I went, I don't mean to <laughs> belabor the point, but it is biologically impossible for me to be A if one of you is not A. And so he looked up his medical records. He, like, called his doctor or something. And his doctor's like, yeah, you're A positive. You've been an A positive for years. What's Holy going on? Shit. And he's like, are you serious? He's like, yeah, dude. Like, you're A positive. You've been A positive for the entire time you've been in my care. Why are you calling me? <laughs> and, and so I suppose he was at the chiropractor. And his chiropractor told him he was O positive based on food allergies, what? which is not how that works. What? And so my dad spent years and so much money on, like, essentially vitamin dirt that he had to put in smoothies and vitamin adhere to a dirt. special diet type that, like, is not good for his health. It advocated, like, full-fat yogurt and dairy products, and he now has, like, heart issues. It's a whole fucking mess. God but my dad's damn. like, wow, all these fucking years... I thought that I was, oh, that's not good. <laughs> no, it isn't. Yeah, once I went to a chiropractor with uh, arm pain because I couldn't get into an urgent care because it was expensive, uh, yeah, not only yeah. did it been, end up costing there. me more, but yep, they... Yep, also been there. Right. It, uh, <laughs> they diagnosed me um, with... What did they say it was? Um, 
what is the thing? Oh, they said I sprained my rotator cuff. Uh, and then I went to a real doctor, and she was like, no, you have tendinitis. Like, you definitely have tendinitis. Don't know what to tell you. Uh, oh, I love that. And then they refused that. to refund my money, which was super cool. Yeah, I got in a car accident years and years ago, and I went to a chiropractor, which was a mistake. Yeah. Um, yep. And they charged me just... Guess how much money they charged me to put a warm, hot pad on me for five minutes? Seventy dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Did you go to seventy five dollars? Did you go to fucking uh? Okay. Well, we can't say it out loud. You're gonna have to beep that out. Okay. But did you? Um, I I know, but I didn't Goddamn. go to there. I went to another one. <laughs> uh, yeah. But... No, I want to call him out. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, I'm still angry. Um, I've been too too anxious to Yelp review the fact that they swindled us out of several thousand dollars because it was Holy going through shit. it was going through our insurance. I went in and I said, "Yeah, I was in a car accident," and I'm actually thoroughly convinced they showed me an X-ray that wasn't mine. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This could be a whole nother episode. <laughs> oh my god! Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Woof. A whole nother episode. It'll be a mini-sode we talk about quacks. Quack science. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. Oh, man. Um, <sighs> uh, do you want to tell the lovely people how you managed to tear those ligaments in your leg? It's embarrassing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I went to a trampoline place, and they said to me, you need to make sure that you blank your shoes and it was either keep on your shoes or take off your shoes. And I couldn't really remember which one it was, but they were very adamant that it is crucial that I do the one that they said or we'll <laughs> severely hurt ourselves. So I decided to play it safe and not ask anyone and keep my shoes on. Now, if we could go into the frictional force between oh, no. shoe rubber and a trampoline, I jumped three times total. And the rubber caught on the trampoline stuff, and my ankle bended inwards. Oh, God. <laughs> and I heard a loud pop as if I cracked all of the knuckles in both of my hands at once. Oh, my God. Went, mmm, that hurts a little bit. Hopped delicately back to the couch. Went, my ankle hurts, and then passed out from the pain oh for an hour and a half. I woke up, and people were surrounding my ankle and looking at it, and they're like, Ew, what's <laughs> wrong with it? And I look, and it had swollen to the size of, I'm going to say an alligator egg. <laughs> that seems to just feels right. Um, You're lucky you didn't and... break it. <laughs> this was, by the way, her birthday. It was my birthday! <laughs> <laughs> and and I was planning on going to a friend's house afterwards. Who's I'm gonna call her Sarah. Her name's not Sarah, but yeah. I'll call her Sarah. And her mother was insistent on me not coming over because she was worried about the liability. Fuck you, Sarah, and fuck your mother. Oh my fuck god, you both. that's insane. Yeah, and then I slept over anyway because it was my fucking birthday and I do what I yeah, want. And then I woke up the next day and you couldn't even see my ankle. There was so much swelling. It's a great A case of the cankles there. And then I think we went to the chiropractor instead of a real doctor. You should have gone to a real doctor. Same. Yeah. yeah, now I have chronic ankle problems, but. Fantastic. Anyway, uh, go to a real doctor always is the message of this entire and, fucking episode. And always eat food and drink water, I think. This feels like something we shouldn't have to say, but... I, you'd think, but here we are talking about an entire social movement based around not eating and drinking. Humans are yep. not a species built to last. <sighs> So we have social media. Um, yeah. <laughs> we've got Instagram, yeah. Twitter, and Facebook, but who cares, at TTKMeUp. Uh, we also have an email address where we accept submissions and nice messages of encouragement. Uh, at... No negative reviews. None. Well, if you're going to gonna, if you're gonna negatively negative. review us, please email it to us and don't put it on our reviews on iTunes because we don't have that many and it fucks with the, uh, fucks with the algorithm a little Honestly, bit. Honestly, really just fucks with my self-esteem. That, so. that is the, the main thing. It'll hurt our feelings. Um, but Also, we do like to f 
change things, so don't feel like you can't tell us. Like, the last thing right. I want in the world is, like, somebody's like, man, every time Olivia changes her voice to the ones, like, slightly lower an octave, like, it blows my mind how annoying that is. Like, let me know. But also... Only if it's something we can change, though, because, it, like, if it's, wow, I really hate that your voice just sucks in general. Like, that's not really a note, you feel? Between us! Hey, both of you are both fundamentally unlikable, and, like, I know that, okay? You don't need to tweet it. Shit, alright? Yeah, like, that's ttkmeup at gmail.com. Um, <laughs> have a website that's ttkmeup.com we have links to a bunch of stuff there uh, including but not limited to our merch store through t public we have t-shirts and baby onesies which i'll never stop bringing up because it's the best and <laughs> so pillows my favorite. and uh, notebooks and mugs and stuff and it's all the same it's just the logo um and uh someday we'll have other stuff but uh, we also have links to our patreon we have five lovely lovely patrons right now and it's lovely to have them. And also, it turns out you can message us, which is really cool. Uh, we got a we got a message today, actually, on our Instagram. We we love reading your messages and responding to all of them. Literally, uh, we got one. Literally from, makes our entire fucking it day does. because we have nothing else going on. So this is really <laughs> yeah, like this is our life, obviously. And we have a fan in Iceland, which blows my goddamn mind. Which is mind. so cool. Just as a side note, your country is the hardest to infected plague, and I just want to like say like oh, plague ink. Oh my. <laughs> wait a minute. No, it's Greenland. I'm sorry, Iceland. You must get this all oh, the time. Shit. But this is Iceland, so you're still. You. Yeah, I'm. Fuck. <laughs> But Iceland, we love you too. A, li- it, a lot easier to infect, if I'm going to be honest yeah. with you. But we're happy you're here. Yeah. How you doing? Keep at it, folks. But yeah, that, that made our day today. Reading that message yeah. was fantastic. Um, so yeah, Basically. always reach out. Don't be shy. Uh, unless you're going to be mean, in which case, do be shy forever. Um, <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> uh, Why are we like this? Yeah, we're so I fragile. No. <laughs> Woof. Okay. Well, thank you so much for listening to my impassioned ranting. Uh, next week is a mini sode. I have no goddamn idea what we're doing. We'll figure I it out. We should keep more, more close, a uh, more close. It's eye. been a really rough few weeks. It, I, yeah. I lost, I lost my watch halfway through last week no! and actually struggled to to remember which day it was. I, I don't oh know if God. you caught it. How many times I had to ask you which day of the week it was. Yeah. I've lost count. Um, you know it's what? Thursday. It'll be fine. You'll get through the GRE and everything will be fine. Probably. So. You're going to do okay. great. Everybody send oh. Olivia a bunch of love about the GRE. Because I send nothing mean. I'm so fragile. <laughs> Wait two weeks to send anything mean. Yeah, then I can handle it. Yeah. Right, and then we'll be fine. Yeah. Um, um, we love you so much. <laughs> It's been it's been real. It sure has. We will see you Deuces. next week. Bye. See ya.